Unity recently released this tech demo running on PS5 showcasing some next-gen impressive graphics. It is a very short video, but it really does show what is possible on PlayStation 5. Before we get into that news and some more, please do leave a like on this video if you found it informative. Let's get right into it. This is another episode of the Daily Gaming Report. Hey what's up guys, OP Gamer here. Before we talk about the demo, let's just show it to you real quick since it's very short. So that was the tech demo, yes it was short, but super impressive nonetheless. Shown in real time, the demo is simply called Lion. It is a collaboration of art and design tools to produce a photorealistic scene. We see the cub playing with its father, and the level of detail in the fur and the adult's mane is very convincing. As reported by Unity, new real-time demo, Lion, Unity art tools in action and the future of Weta Digital for RT3D. Lion marks a key milestone for our Unity art tools, and illustrates our ongoing work to build tools that empower creators. This collaborative demo showcases what happens when artists and developers work together at the production level to push the boundaries of what's possible for real-time high-fidelity visuals. Unity states that the demo was running at 30 FPS at 4K on PS5. And what you see here is some behind the scenes footage that they released as well. And they started talking about WIG. It is a new tool that Unity has used to make this demo. Quote, WIG is a different way of working. It's actually the fastest grooming tool that I've ever used. End quote. They say that the reason why they created this demo was to help validate their Unity art tools in a production setting solving real production needs that artists face on a regular basis and making their tools and workflows better and more robust throughout. Now Unity has done this before. In March, they released a teaser called Enemies, in which they showcased some great character model fidelity. I really hope we see more of this, it's really cool to see. I wish it was a little longer, but still really nice and cool to see nonetheless. Leave your thoughts about what you think of this demo, and does it make you excited for the future of games on PS5? Moving on, Forspoken has recently released a trailer, but unfortunately many people are memeing it. When they have released the trailer on August 8th, the trailer gathered over 3 million views on Twitter, but if you notice there are 3,800 replies and only 15,000 likes. So you can guess what happened. A lot of people were memeing it in the replies and making fun of it due to the questionable writing and character monologue. I gotta be honest, everything about this game just seems alright. I don't see anything next gen about it or that pushes the boundaries. In fact, a lot of it just seems very clunky and I have to agree that the acting does feel awkward. I really hope I'm wrong about this, but it just feels like one of those games that will come out and will suffer in sales but could possibly make a return in the future when the game goes on sale and more people get their hands on it and possibly the game gets patched more. Let me know, are you excited about Forspoken? Or do you also agree that the game needs a lot more time in the oven and the gameplay just doesn't seem impressive? especially when you compare it to current gen games that have already come out, such as Red Dead Redemption, Elden Ring, and more. The next news of the day is that Microsoft says that Sony will benefit from launching first-party games on PS Plus. As reported by PlayStation Lifestyle, in the midst of an ongoing spat over Activision Blizzard's impending purchase, Microsoft has dismissed Sony's stance on PS Plus Day 1 games, arguing that the company will actually benefit from launching its first-party games on the revamped service. Quote, Sony could be able to leverage the high quality of their first party games even more by making them available on PlayStation Plus at launch day. Such a strategy might be able to quickly speed up the growth of the service's user base as a response to the competitive pressure of Game Pass or any other service. And the strategy is not adopted by Sony. Even when it comes to the new and updated PlayStation Plus, such a move by Sony could make PlayStation Plus even more attractive in order to be able to rival eventual strategies by competing game publishers to the benefit of gamers. Now Microsoft has come out and said a lot about Sony lately and a lot of it I disagreed with but this I do agree with but I also don't think it will ever happen because it just doesn't make any sense business wise. I do agree that it will make the service much more appealing if you have first party titles such as God of War Ragnarok to release on PlayStation Plus on day one. Now just saying that sounds ridiculous and will never happen but if it did happen I think we can all agree that of course it will benefit PS Plus but as a person that likes owning games I personally like purchasing big titles such as God of War Ragnarok to have physically and own forever or even purchase them digitally instead of just owning them on a subscription and once you stop paying for the subscription you will lose access to all the games on your library. Now I am subscribed to the PlayStation Plus Premium and I am enjoying it a lot but I still feel bad because once I stop paying for the subscription, all the games that I enjoyed will be gone. And you might be thinking, well you played them already, so why do you care? Sometimes you just like to go back to games you played before, just for nostalgia's sake. There are many games that I go back to that I've already finished, 
and replay again. But with subscription services such as this, you can't just do that unless you keep paying for the subscription over and over again. And what happens when one day the subscription stops working or Sony just stops supporting it? Then you are doomed to lose all access to the games. That's why I will always support purchasing the game instead of renting it for a limited time. But do leave your thoughts about what Microsoft is saying here. Do you agree with what they're saying? And do you think it will happen that Sony will make the first party titles available on day one on PS Plus? Or do you agree with me that that will never happen? as it just doesn't make sense. Sony's already super successful with the games without having to do that. So making a drastic change like this not only will affect them business-wise, but it might also affect the quality of the games being produced. Moving on, according to Sega, Sonic Frontiers will not be delayed. As reported by VGC, Sega management has once again maintained that there are no plans to delay Sonic Frontiers following mixed reception from fans and media. Quote, We do not consider postponing the launch at this point. We have high expectations for Sonic Frontiers, the mainstay title that is scheduled to be launched this winter. End quote. So by what they're saying here, they seem pretty confident by the release date of this game. But it has happened before, where developers and publishers are very confident about the release date of a game, but something happens and the game somehow gets delayed again. But it's looking more likely that the game is set to release on the release date that they intentioned, which is winter 2022. Now opening night live is happening very soon, and it's already confirmed that Sonic Frontiers will be there on it. I can't wait to see more of this game, and hopefully it impresses me more, as the recent gameplay didn't really get me super high for the game, as it just seemed like an open world Sonic game, which is cool I guess, but I wish for something a little more different, or more impressive looking. Hopefully that can prove me wrong in opening night live. Our final news of the day, in the last episode of the daily gaming report that I did, I talked about how PT celebrated its 8th year anniversary and how Guillermo del Toro said F Konami in a reply to a Kojima tweet about PT. Well, it's being reported that the person who delisted PT off of PlayStation, which means that this is the person that made it impossible to download the game on PlayStation right now. Well, he had come out and said that he wished that it had gone differently and that it was a tough situation all around. Again, as reported by VGC, 8 years after its release, the person who claims to have been tasked with pulling Konami's PT from PlayStation servers has spoken about the experience for the first time. Now this person goes by the name of Jade Purley on Twitter, and he said this, Fun fact, since I was the first party lead at the time at Konami, I helped get this product set up on the storefronts, fake publishers and everything, and I was the one who had to call Sony and ask them to take it down and block redownloads. That was a super fun conversation. Now Pearl goes on to say, Sony was fantastic to work with, it was a tough situation all around. It was a ride, honestly, not a great situation all around. I really felt for Sony who had to bear the burnt of dealing with the situation. It was definitely an interesting lesson in power and the importance of picking your battle in relationship management. And they also mentioned that it was awkward because they went to many lengths to convince Sony to do this and then they asked them to take it down all of a sudden. It must have been uncomfortable for them to do that. Now what's interesting is the last thing said here. It was exciting to see people hyped about it and see the work pay off, but in a way also not. I wonder if this implies the drama that happened between Hideo Kojima and Konami. Maybe they are happy that PT was super successful, but if you remember, Hideo Kojima purposely made PT and put hints in the game, indicating that his relationship with Konami was not good. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly 10 months back. And Kojima has said this in the past in interviews. He had a lot of problems with Konami during the making of PT. And he put small stuff in the game that says stuff about Konami in an ambiguous way. So I wonder if that's the reason why they're saying that people were hyped about it and they're excited about it, but at the same time they're not. That is all for today's news. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, again please do leave a like, as that will help me a lot to make more content like this. Also subscribe to the channel for your daily gaming news. And don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to never miss any future uploads. That's all from me now, I'll catch you next time.